it's like a category of its own because not like just yeah. an anime you're enjoying it's like it is like the progenitor of everything all the interest around anime itself even. you promised to marry me goku i do have like a ge very general idea about like going about work is i think your work should always be so outstandingly good that it becomes bad business for companies not to hire you i make a royal exception my job right now is really fun uh, i work on x-men this is actual assets for something you're supposed to make and that what you're making is literally what brought you here <laughs> like you you were growing up with this stuff you were riffing that right. -na 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 in your head Lending it to my friends was like this secret piece of contraband, like we're sharing amongst each other. And then in grade six, I did another one. Um, if they're feeling that, it means they probably aren't good enough to make it. And they should like mm. really recognize that they're not good enough. The conversation you're about to hear is between me and Adonis. And most of it is about Dragon Ball. Um, if it isn't clear by now, uh, Dragon Ball Z had such a profound positive effect on my life. So um, with the death of Akira Toriyama, I'm essentially completely speechless. Except for what I wrote on this paper. To Mr. Akira Toriyama, I could say how much I loved your stories, or I could tell you what Dragon Ball meant to me as a child. I could mention that growing up, drawing was literally all I had and discovering your works through the adventures of Goku and friends created such joy in my life that the thought of you leaving this world feels almost like Goku left with you. In some crazy way, it feels like Dragon Ball went from an is to a was, and that the thought of it being a fond part of my memory is bitter, sweet, and everything in between. But today I won't. Today I won't focus on any of that. Instead, I'll just tell you that I had a great drawing day. That I had a lovely morning playing with my daughter, holding my wife, and then my pencil. That the childish joy for drawing that you seem to never be in short supply of lives in me, and that to carry on your legacy, artists must never forget that that is the true key to staying on the quest. So thank you for inspiring me to be the best artist, father, son, and friend that I can be. Thank you for the immeasurable pounds of enthusiasm that you've supplied me with through Dragon Ball. And thank you for always being number one. And goodbye. So... It's just kind of wild because I think this is we've only talked a couple of times prior, like face to face or camera to camera. Um, but I think everybody, I don't want to say everybody, but the vast majority of the internet became almost an instant fan overnight after you dropped Legends. Um, how did we get to this? Like everybody that has seen it kind of reveres it as one of, if not the best animated fan film that anybody's really ever seen. Um, so how do, how do we get to this point? What is, what is your journey? How do you get to dropping something so profound? First of all, thank you for all the accolades. <laughs> but um, no, it's, uh, I I mean, honestly, like it was always going to be this. My, my friend mm. who did the voice of Broly, in the film, like we we grew up together, he was in the documentary, and you know we uh, we've always talked about like how Dragon Ball Z specifically, just every day it was well, everything everyone looked forward to. We'd run home to watch it on YTV. Sometimes we'd miss the first ten minutes because it's too far away, and uh, mm. that's all we would talk about the next day. And then the the series would just start over every time Goku got to the end of Snake Way, and then one day, yes, they started to show the rest of the shit, and we're like, oh my god. <laughs> This is crazy. Yeah. And then the KO Ken times four and the Yajirobe and like all that stuff. So we, we lost our minds. Like we were like given a gift. And I mean, just from the beginning, like that inspired all of us, like on the soccer field, uh, when we were practicing Taekwondo, when we were drawing, like all that stuff. And, um, I was always drawing Dragon Ball Z all the time. It was like almost mm. all I did. And me and my friends had like these binders where they were really good. So I, 
three, uh, there were three of us. There was Emsley, me, and Brian. And we'd always try to like one up each other. But then we see the one that the other guy drew and we're like, hey, I like how you did like the bicep on this one. Let, let me, let me borrow your book today. And then we'd draw each other's ones. And, um, I got older and my tastes kind of like change over time, but like the love for Dragon Ball Z never went away. And like, you know, as an adult, you're watching a kid's show now and like, maybe you can't enjoy it the same way. Well, not with the same reverence, but like, uh, you can always remember what it was like enjoying it when you enjoyed it the first time. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, with that, like that feeling never went away for me. And like, you know, you get busy in life and, you know, maybe you meet a woman, maybe you get a job and like these things take time. Like you gotta dedicate a lot of time to it, but like, uh, I always wanted to be an animator and then I, I became one and um, just somehow I had to connect it right back to that Dragon Ball Z in some sort of way. And when I started the project, it was the choice of either doing that or um, doing an animated piece for my book. Cause I had finished this book that took me, um, it was a course of like five years to, to draw. And um, wow. I was at this point where like, okay, you know what? I always want to turn into like a master anthology. And this is what my whole Kickstarter that I'm doing right now is, um, but I always wanted to do that. I wanted to do an animated spot for it. And then I could say like goodbye to the project forever. Like, okay, this is this mm. be it. I can move on. It was either that or legend. And I'm like, just the, the Dragon Ball Z fan of me and like, you know, getting older, I'm trying to be more mature with my time and stuff. I'm thinking if I don't do it now, it's now or never. And mm. it was, it was, it was so good. Uh, like, I, I'm so happy that I did that. It took just as long as it needed to. I mean, if I wasn't right. working and I had time to do, it, I maybe could have finished it in a year and a half. But, um, those, the, like, I just, it kept getting longer and longer. The story were just getting longer and longer. So <laughs> I, I'm thinking like, you know, if I'm going to make this, it has to be the movie that I would impress, like would impress myself with. Like it has to impress right. me. So that's why I just kept getting longer and longer. I'm like, no, fuck it, man. I'm going to make this freaking movie. It's going to be exactly right. this. And then it, it was, and it was worth it. I'm so glad I, I did it the, the way. Yeah. 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 It's, it was so crazy when I first saw it. Um, I agree with you. Like. <laughs> How how old are you, Nasser? I just turned thirty six. So we're the same age. So like, so the when when you're talking about it restarting, and I was like, yes, like I remember, like <laughs> oh, and start over again, like because yeah. it would like do it like two times, and then it would continue to the next story, yeah. and then I think it would do it like when Goku lands on Namek, and then it would yeah, restart, and I'm, gets him in the stomach, I'm, and then they start it all over again. Yeah, I'm like, no way, and. So, yeah, I I completely remember that feeling. But and this is what I tell people when they would ask me what my top five is. And I'm like, I'm like, well, my favorite anime of all time is Dragon Ball Z, like just Dragon Ball as a, as a series. But I was like, I never put it in my top five because it it means something different to me than just a it's ranking. So funny that like, it's like, that. Yeah, like that's, I can understand that because it's almost like um it's like a category of its own because not like just yeah. an anime you're enjoying. It's like. It's like the progenitor of everything, all the interest around anime itself, even, right? Yeah, and I think yeah. that was the thing. Like when people talk about like the that first anime that they watch when they're kids, it's usually like you people will say like everybody has biases f to different things, but I think the one anime that you watch as a kid that gets you into the genre or the medium, it's mm -hmm. like it holds you have a special bias to that because it makes you feel things that you've never felt before. You, you resonate with a character in a way you probably never had before. And it was like, it's like a weird feeling, but so I never put it in my top five ever. But if you're like, yeah. Oh, what's your favorite? I'm like Dragon Ball, but I don't put it in my top five. So if you're asking me what my top five is, it's this, 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 and this, but mm -hmm. This is a no, special I get thing I to me. Get yeah. yeah. So it, it was a really cool thing when we, when I saw your, your movie, I was like, this is insane. Cause it felt like you had this ridiculous passion for the property, <laughs> but then it, it, but then you have like your film, your filmmaker take on it of, I need to put my own spin on this. I need to adapt it in a way where it still holds true to the source in, 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 in respects to it, but mm -hmm. I want to, I want to put my artistic flair on it. Um, so like yeah. what, when did you develop to start developing this art style that you have, or is it just kind of been over the years, prog you know, progressively getting to that point? Yeah. I mean like art style and stuff like it, I, I find it kind of funny because I, I find it hard to see that I even have a style. 
Some people are like, mm. no, I can tell. I can tell that's yours. It's your style. But like, it, I think most artists are like that. They can't tell like, oh, that's my style. Unless they're like really trying to craft like how they do it, like how they shape things or how they do like blue shadows. And like they have like elements that they add. And then the sum of all those elements are their style. And I have like a little bit more of like um, a bit of like a Hindu uh, idea about like style is it's not like what you're adding to your work to give it flavor. It's like what you're stripping away and what's left. So like if you if you take away oh, yeah. a person's like pre- pencil and you give them a paintbrush, it's like now now give me a piece of uh, of art. If you take away the art uh, the paintbrush and give them just the ink. Use your fingers now. Do something for me. If you keep stripping things away from their style, you take away the paper, you take away the canvas, you take away the medium. Like what is left? There's always going to be something mm. left the person can do. Well, at, at that point, like what's the last thing they can do? Uh, give me chalk. Chalk is the last thing you're going to hand me. What I can do with the chalk, like it'll really show you like what my style. Uh, maybe in its essence is because like that's what you can't get rid of you can get rid of anything that is added to it but like you can't get rid of what like is at the core and i know i'm just talking about mediums right but like you can do with a brush what you can't do with a pencil and what you can do with digital mm. ink you can't do with maybe like real ink so that does affect your style in a way um but mm. it may not be like the only thing so when you if you're able to like look at some of my stuff you're like oh where'd you get this style and stuff like uh i appreciate it when people think i have one it means something's seeping through all all the color, all the pencil, all the ink, like something is like being felt, which is, is, is a good feeling. So, um, mm. so what was your question? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like it, it's like, so visually, like when essentially what you're talking about in terms of how you, you know, obviously you say that you don't really, you don't think you have a style, but you, when you look at like, let's say your, your drawing of Goku, it doesn't, it, it, it looks like Goku, but it's not Toriyama. It's not, yeah, it, maybe, you could oh, put them side by side and be like, oh, like that's Goku, but it's like a, a, ultra, a alternate version of this character, but you mm-hmm. know, it's still Goku. Like how yeah. is, was there like, in the, like, you know what I'm talking about? I do. And I think like, maybe you touched on something that I don't pay attention to often. It's like, maybe like what you're feeling from a drawing is part of the style, as opposed to like how it just like, looks because I maybe not draw my eyes like Toriyama or my arms like Toriyama, right. but whatever I drew, like it's resonating, it's feeling like Goku. So like Vegeta has got like that, like brutish personality with the, the forever right. frowned eyebrows and the head always looking down and Goku's got the bright eyes and the, the eyebrows not always clinched. And, you know, like he's got all these a- attributes to him and maybe I'm capturing the attributes, but I'm just drawing it a different way, you know? See, this is, this is so dope because like, I used to draw when I was a kid. Um, and I, for people that don't know, like I was really into car design, like very into car design. So um, I was going to go to school for it, but wor- life took me in a different direction. But in that regard, the things that you're talking about though is so interesting because we're looking at the strokes. We're not looking at the intention, yeah. right? Like, and as an artist, you're thinking of, the intention, what's the mood, what's the, what's the personality? Like, and I think that's the, the detail of an artist that you have that as a consumer, as a viewer, we're not paying attention to, <laughs> but it's, that's what makes it feel like the character. Um, okay, good, good. so, so let's go all the way back. Like when, what, what was like the earliest memory of you thinking like, this is what I want to do or has, were you on a different trajectory at a certain point in your life? I mean, uh, earliest I want to like actually do animation. I didn't know it was a job. It didn't occur to me that people got paid to make Transformers or GI Joe or whatever. Um, but in grade five, I had made an animated Dragon Ball movie that was 180 drawings. And I trapped myself in my room in the summer for like two months. I would close the door oh, wow. and I'd close the windows and I wouldn't drink anything. I, I wanted to get super hot and like just nasty. It, it was, and it was just like, this is the place I want to work in. And when I would open the door, that was like my reward for doing a day's hard work. And then I would get like grape soda. And it was so nice. It was like, I really wanted that drink so bad. And like, that's, I felt like I earned it. And that was before I even knew what the hyperbolic time chamber was. I accidentally created right. one for myself. Because remember, we only got to Frieza, right? We didn't get right. to see all this shit after. Right. So, um, but um, yeah, so in grade five, uh, I had made like my first little Dragon Ball Z movie. We filmed it with like a, a camcorder. My friend had a Windows 95 computer. He sped it all up, put some Street Fighter EX music on it. And then that was it. Like I, I had it on a VHS. I kept lending it to my friends. It was like this secret piece of contraband. Like we we're sharing amongst each other. And then in grade six, I did another one. 
And then, um, but it wasn't Dragon Ball Z. It was something else. And it was like three times the length. It was like 400 pages. And um, I kept thinking like, how would, how do an anime, they, they track across a person's face. Like, do they have to draw it over and over and just keep sliding it over? And then I figured out, wait, what if I just made the drawing bigger and I zoomed into it and I just kept moving the camera over a little bit. I figured out what a pan was without knowing what the word was. And, That's so uh, funny. And uh, when I finally applied to animation school, which was years later, um, I asked some, like the, the director of the program before I even applied, I'm like, do we like learn how to like put a camera somewhere? And do you know what I'm talking about? Like if it moves, like you don't have to draw the drawing. He's like, yeah, yes, I know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> if you can draw it, you're going to get into this school. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. And he, I know he probably thought I was like such a dork. Like this guy has no idea what he's about to learn, but I did. <laughs> and here I am. But like, I did have like different paths I wanted to go. Like uh, I went to university after high school for uh, a political science and social science. And I, I did mm -hmm. an undergrad in that. And then, um, I was considering like going into teaching. Like uh, I want to like maybe like major uh, within New York uh, and pursue my master's. But I always thought like, you know, I always wanted to be an animator. So it's not like my bachelor disappears if I leave school. Like maybe I'll, right. I'll save up while I'm in my last year and then save up for school and then go to animation school. And then I did. And then within the first like week, I'm like, I'm not going back to York ever again. This is going to, I'm going to have to make this work. And then mm. that was it. That was like, that was what brought me this way. So it was always the plan, but there were definitely things in the way where like, maybe this is, I want to do something else, you know? That is so cool. Like, so what have you, did you always have, like when you talk about this kind of hyperbolic time chamber you created for yourself? Yeah. Wh what was, did you have this, did you always have this like, ridiculous work ethic focus like where did that come from i mean i've told people this before but i don't consider it a work ethic if it's something that i really am dying to do it's like recess mm. to me like you wouldn't tell somebody how to play at recess right they're just dying to get out to go play outside so like for me mm. i'm dying to make an, a cartoon so like you give me the free time like that's that's it like I, you gave it to me now it's mine i can do whatever i want with it i only get an hour i only get 45 minutes so drawing like that to me it's not a work ethic it's like it's playtime but it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. it's not hard work and it doesn't mean that you don't have to be a professional right. about it and organize it it's just another way of framing it and that's why um the stamina can stay high even like if you're you know even good things they, they, they take a toll on you right you draw too long you right. work too long you play too long like you just get exhausted so um but i think um yeah from the beginning like i've just always been obsessed with doing things that i really like and um that's there is no compromise for it in that way. Like if I have to only get it for 30 minutes a day, that's all I get. If I get 20 minutes, if I get five hours, beautiful. It's just bonus, 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 bonus. So yeah, it's kind of how I look at it. That's a pretty interesting philosophy on, on how you're observing it. Because I think for some, they're looking for what's the thing that I can do, right? What's the thing that I can get obsessed about? Mm -hmm. And it seems like for you, you weren't really focused on, on that. Like, it seemed like you, did you know early on that you were just, you really loved art? I think I just really like doing. So like, if I, if I was, I was really into like, I am still into like martial arts a lot. And when I got into mm. Taekwondo, like I was really obsessed with it. Uh, when I was like mm. learning about religion, I really wanted to learn when I was in university, I really wanted to like study and do my essays. Like, and animation just the drawing uh aspect of it because you just it's just it's a raw amount of hours you just have to dedicate uh it's just really obsessed with just learning what i want to learn maybe that's it maybe mm. i'm really obsessed with learning um just not everything you know right i mean it, it, do you think do you have siblings yeah i have a a brother and three sisters now, are your siblings, do they have that that trait as well of getting obsessed with things? Or is that kind of bespoke to Nasser? Only my biggest sister. I think she's uh, just like me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, right down to how she rubs her nose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that, I mean, it's so cool because in my, in my head, it's um, sometimes it's an environment that allows that to f foster but then sometimes it's the opposite like the it's almost like the environment prohibits you from doing it 
which kind of influences you to want to get obsessed with, you know, it's like, yeah. it's a, it's, it almost can go both ways. So like, was it like your, your home environment was, Hey, go do what you want. Or was it very like, I need you to be focused on academics and like, what was like that growing up? Because I know for some it's, Hey, try everything. And some it's like, I need you to do this. Yeah. I mean, I come from like a, a Bengali and a Muslim household. So like, Parents' mm. involvement in their kids' development at that generation is not very much. Like, did you eat mm. today? Did you do your prayers? Did you eat today? Mm. Like, that's, 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 those are the questions <laughs> that you're asked, right? They're not asking, like, Got do it. you feel, feel fulfilled today? How, how did you do in school? They're like, that's just not how it was. Like, that was up to us. Got it. And maybe because it was up to us, like, we took it to a, with a certain level of sincerity and seriousness. So we always should, mm. I mean, we're not always getting the best grades or whatever it is, but like, um, we we were serious about what we were doing so we had um it was a, it was a religious household not like supremely strict or anything like that and uh we were um always playing outside all the time and uh and even some of my, in my circle of friends in my neighborhood like there were two guys who could really draw and i was the third and we'd be trading drawings even when we were kids like this is before like that whole like dragon ball z stuff like this is when i was in grade two and um mm. and as we were an older something that kind of fell out of most of their lives but it stuck with me but um yeah, like uh, the, the household, the environment I grew up in, like it wasn't necessarily fostering like uh, guided sort of education or guided learning or guided anything. But maybe because we were focused on a few things like uh, like uh, religion or um, school uh, or just, yeah, just really simple, basic things. Like, did you pray five times a day today? Did you go to school? Because we had like these pillars stuck in our life. Um, mm -hmm. we had all this other time surrounding it that we could just do anything we wanted with and right. uh, we just did good things with it. So, uh, for me, like it was a, a combination of like things like playing outside, Taekwondo and, uh, drawing, like a lot of drawing. Yeah. It seems like you, you, you dove into the imagination. Like it, you know, I think that's something that, uh, I know for me growing up, it was like, obviously we didn't have a ton of tech, so mm -hmm. you were forced to play with things that you had or yeah. say, okay, we have this box. We're turning this into what now? Like, or, yeah, exactly. Hey, let's, exactly. let's build a tent. And then this tent is there. And now we're like, all right, we're going to create a spaceship out of this. And all right, so you're over there and you got like, it, it was like really using the imagination. And I think when I got into drawing myself, it was a very similar thing of like, oh, I can create what I want here. Like I can just make stuff. And that was, <laughs> exciting like i was like man like i could just make whatever like okay let's make whatever so dude like, you, you reminded me of something so funny like when i was in grade four uh i was obsessed with the power rangers and the red ranger mm. there was like this like season where they had like another monster like the red ranger wasn't the tyrannosaurus rex anymore it was a dragon and i remember the animation yeah, yeah. i gotta look it up again there was like this dark sky and the, like the dragon's like going through it like this as glowing right. eyes I was obsessed with that scene and I didn't have any like Power Ranger toys. They're so expensive if you could even find mm. them. But my friend Matthew right. did and he brought that dragon to school one day and I lost my shit. But I, on the same day, I couldn't believe it. I had drawn that dragon like but I drew it like in the pose of like how it was going like really like like snake like and like with his mouth open, his eyes going and I cut it out and I was playing with it. And he was like, yo, can I see your dragon? And he had the dragon with the toy one. He's like, can we trade for a while? I'm like, yes, we can trade. And I <laughs> like, got to play with it. And then um, I gave it back to him eventually. And other people wanted to play with the paper dragon, man. It was crazy. <laughs> Yo, that, that's insane. Like it, it, that's wild because it's like you created something off of your memory, <laughs> but people enjoyed it. Like it, it, it's so yeah. interesting how art does that sometimes where it's like it's the best version of bootlegging something that you could ever think of. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. So like, all right, you're you're graduated, you start you start into art school. Mm -hmm. Was it was it like right out the gate that you started uh working in that space or like how long did it take before you were actually starting to work as an animator? Yeah, I, um, I did two years of traditional animation and then I dropped out of school because the mm. department told me to. <laughs> they basically said like... The if department you're only told you to. Yeah, because uh, the third year is 3D animation and um, I'm not interested in learning 3D animation. So they said, okay, if you're really uh, focused on getting the 2D work, 
you have the skills you have now. Go. Go get your work. So it was a positive thing. They weren't saying, get out of school. We don't like you. <laughs> it right. wasn't even. So I had the blessings of every teacher to just leave. So I did. And after I left that year, I spent, I told myself, okay, what's the responsible amount of time I can be unemployed? For me, it was six months, I said. Mm. So in that six months, I wrote my second book and drew it and uh, got it printed. And then the day it was done, I started a portfolio that was taking, uh, it took maybe a month and a half to finish. And basically right after that portfolio was done, within that week, I got my first job. So um, it was a, it was a bit of a, it was kind of quick, like in terms of like when I started to create the portfolio and apply and it felt kind of like I was mm -hmm. cheating because I was expecting like, you know, like months and months of rejections and finally selling for like an internship and then like scraping my way up to like a regular paid job, but it didn't happen. And I, f I thought like, is this some kind of trick? Like, is someone going to take this away from me? You know, like, um, but it's, it's, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what did it feel like when you started, like, was it right into like shows or was it into like, like private client work? Like what was the first thing where you actually saw your, yeah your work? Um, I was, a uh, I started off as a background painter on Total Drama Island is <laughs> some Canadian show. Uh, and, okay. um, and then from there, like I was working in Canadian studios and then from there I branched out. I was trying to get into storyboards as much as possible. And I finally got my first position as um, like a kind of like a retake storyboard artist. Like uh, they do like uh, revisions. And then that mm. kind of bled into more storyboard work. But on the in my mind, I was always like, no, animation is the thing. And whether I do it for other people professionally or I do it for myself, that has to exist in my life. And I was getting mm. like little small pieces of like uh, freelance work here and there. The first thing I did like really sweet, like it was paid for was uh, Army of Frogs for Sanford Green's project. And um, it was a great trailer we did. And it was the first time I got to meet mm. him. And uh, we've been friends ever since. And that was, it felt crazy to be like paired up with all these other great artists and like seeing it all together. And then the trailer playing in the theater. I didn't get to be at theater, but like it was it was good to know like how everything was going about it. And uh, I've had opportunities come from there and I didn't know which one would be the best one. They're really good paying ones. There were ones that had a lot of prestige and like good people on the project. And my friend told me that the more of one type of work you do, the more of that work will come your way. And it, I mean, that's math, right? If you have your portfolio right. keep building in one way, of course, that's what you're going to get known for. But like, right. it also means your skill in that is developing. It's getting heavier. And people are going to want it more. So I ended up like pushing away some really uh, high quality feature storyboard stuff just to take on like little bits here and there of like, like Castlevania here or like Battleborn there. And, and, um, it, it worked. It added up. It, it per project, I was being paired up with like really good directors who were giving me good notes, and that's that's kind of like the best kind of schooling you can get if you get a director who can give you great notes. And um, it's added up, man. And I've been stealing from them ever since. You know, like just like gobbling <laughs> up all the notes and like all the powers of all the people I work with. And um, that's that that's kind of the way I've gone about it. I've I've wanted to focus on animation, but whatever way I could get it, I would want to get it. Uh, it is more like my f completely full-time thing right now that I'm doing, but um, on outside of work, I also do that. <laughs> so whether I was doing it full-time or not, I would want to just be doing animation. Right. Now is, is with the, with projects and stuff, like are there, so you said like Castlevania, you actually worked on the Castlevania series? The, uh, the cartoon. Yeah. I, I worked on some storyboards and some animation. Uh, it was, it was not much. Like, the, I, I just didn't have enough bandwidth. Right. That's the one that's on Netflix. Yeah. So I worked on season no, one. I'm, two. I'm watching that right now, actually. Oh, I'm actually nice. <laughs> reacting to that right now. Uh, that's actually really dope. So she so said that you did storyboard work on that and um, yeah. some, I did some stuff on, Yeah. Season one storyboards and then like season two um, uh, stuff. I just did some animation on it and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I'm actually like confused. Like now we're like, it was season two storyboards I was doing during season one, um, some vampire council stuff. But, uh, but Got I remember it. I was, I was drawing the characters too detailed and they're like, you need to loosen up because your drawings are getting so tight, but they're also off model. And the Korean artists are just going to trace your drawings and they trace them wrong. So you need to give them less information now. I'm like, uh -huh. oh, okay. And then I loosened up and it was good. It was, it was like following like what the rest of the guys were doing. So I was learning, like just learning from like, you know, doing what I was, I guess, hired to do, but like, I didn't realize I was going to get so much out of it. So in that process, it seems like, I, I, I think for myself, cause I, again, I'm not in the space, but you saying that 
hey, you're getting direction saying, hey, I need you to loosen up on detail because the other artists need to be able to mimic what you're doing, I'm assuming, for different scenes. Is that is that what uh, was going on? What it is is that because I was putting so much detail in my drawings, but they weren't drawn to model, um, they look like they're, this is a detailed drawing, or this is all I have to follow when you're giving it. So they're going to follow that, but they're following a wrong drawing. So if I actually gave them less information, they are now forced to be like, okay, well, this is like that. Now I got to match it to the model sheet and I got to, I got to fix what's not given to me, but it looks like I'm giving mm. them more. So, um, the better thing is to actually loosen up and not give them to like over, overdraw these drawings, so to speak. Got it. That's so yeah. interesting. Uh, how yeah. So for what are some of like, I guess the favorite, your favorite series are pieces of uh, content that you've done? Like, what are like the things you're like, oh, this, I really enjoyed this particular project. Uh, definitely the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. That was like a really oh, fun Oh, that's cool. Work on. Um, I, I did a little bit of work on Lego Monkey Kid that was really fun because that shows like, mm. it's like Studio Trigger, like injected steroids in this whole show. It's crazy. Um, oh, wow. And uh, I mean, there's there's been really cool projects here and there, but um, to be honest, like, Professional work isn't like what excites me. Like it's, I, it's just my oh, own really? stuff. Like I, I would rather work for a friend, uh, like friends projects and stuff like that. Like the, a lot of independent projects like are a lot more exciting than just like a lot of the jobs. My job right now is really fun. Uh, I work on X-Men. Um, so that's probably, I, I should have started with that. That's probably the best thing I've ever worked on. Like it's, it's the funnest thing. <laughs> I have a great team. Yeah. I'm working with uh, that's like, cool. really great people. That's the uh, the the new series that they're coming out with um, for Disney, yeah. correct? Yeah, that's right. That that's cool. So, is it like a without getting you into hot space? Because I I know spoilers and all that stuff, and and yeah. talking <laughs> about unreleased projects isn't really a thing. Um, I'm assuming it's a, a continuation of the older X Men series, or at yeah, least it's not a reboot. Yeah, right. Um, so that's something to look forward to. That's pretty cool. That's actually yeah. really cool. Yeah, I think, um, I think especially for, <laughs> yeah, I think for sure. I mean, that's one of the things for us, you know, in my head, I was like, what were some of the shows as a kid that I wish were now? And X-Men is one of those, like, it just has that, it just has yeah. a quality of, of, man, I really, I would really want to see a newer version of this show. Yeah. So that's really cool. I think you're going to be excited that, for it, though. <laughs> so that's what's up. I mean, does it, I mean, how does it feel like working on something like that that you grew up on, like seeing it as a kid and then being able to work on a project like that? How does yeah, it feel? It's surreal, man. Like, uh, it's bizarre, especially like when you hear the voice actors and then you look at all these design sheets and you're like, dude, this is like this is actual assets for something you're supposed to make, and that what you're making is literally what brought you here. <laughs> like you, you were growing up with this stuff. You were riffing that right. da -na 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 in your head, like when you were a kid. So like, it's a, uh, it's, it's bizarre. It, it really is. Yeah. That's so crazy. Cause I'm, I'm like, a lot of people wish they had some kind of like opportunity to do work or uh, be a part of something that they grew up on. It's almost like I, I would probably reference it to like, if you're a car guy, like, mm -hmm. You know, you see these cars when you're a kid, like, oh, man, I'd really like to have the other poster on the wall. And then, like, when you get to your 50s, you can now afford the car that you yeah. – and, and the person that goes and gets to, gets to buy the car that they were always looking at when they were a kid. That's what it feels like to me of, like, man, like, this is so cool. So, yeah, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. In your professional journey, is it – has it always been, like, you know – all right, cool. We just got done with this. We're on to the next. Was there ever any lulls in your professional journey where it's like, man, like, okay, I wonder when this next project's going to come or like, or just has it oh, always yeah. just been on to the next thing? Dude, it's a gypsy life. Like if you're, if you're a freelancer, like you're constantly just going from project to project and you know, it, it brings back the idea of like job security. People are like, oh, don't you want to be in one studio, work your whole uh, career there and like it's better job security. I'm like, what do you mean? You don't, well, you don't have job security. You can be out the door the next day. Production can be mm. out of money. They they could downsize the studio. At least with my freelancer, like Gypsy Life, I know how long the contract is. It might be three months, mm. it might be four, it might be six. But I know when I'm going to have to hunt for the next thing. So I know my availability is going to open up. So it's a different way of going about it. But um, And both lives have their uncertainties. But like 
Mm. I've always been on that that first part of it, like where I was just um, just constantly hopping from project to project. And uh, it's kind of nice because um, sometimes like you would rather just get new work to do than doing revisions on stuff that you already did. You feel like there's no like mm. sense of accomplishment, like get like really exhausting, even though like mm. they're just paying for your time, right? Like that's how people think about it. They're just right. paying for my time. I, I just got to clock in, but it's not the same feeling. Um, so mm. yeah, I, I do uh, at least appreciate that part of like the more nomadic way of going about work. But um, yeah. I think that's been it for me from the beginning. Yeah, I mean that's pretty. Uh, again, like it, your your outlook on things is very unique, and I think uh, it's because I think in some fashions, like in dance, for instance, I was a professional dancer for a little bit, and gigging and gig to gig, and like, all right, cool, we're on this project, we're on this contract, um, and for some it was like stressful. It was very stressful, right? Because it's like, all right, cool. Once we're done, now you got to go, you're in, before the contract's done, you're trying to see if you can find some auditions for some new work. But if there isn't any work, there isn't any work. And then when you finally get an audition call or something like that, now you're there with 200 other people trying to get, you know, a, a, an allocation in, in the cast. Mm -hmm. So is there in, in the animation space, is it like auditions or is it more so you submit an application or like, how is that? How is that process of acquiring new work? Yeah, I think like it's a combination of some stuff. So there's definitely the like the when it rains, it pours sort of thing. You feel like you're getting opportunities from left, right, and center. And then you accept a few of them because you only have 24 hours in a day. And then when you're finished your job, it seems like there's nothing left. Because there's seasons when things start up. There's seasons where they wrap up. So um, that's one thing to think about. So it even like, as far as you get in your professional career, you're always going to feel like, oh, do people not need my skills anymore? Like, am I, am I getting dated? But it, it really is a consequence of just the environment, like the, the work playing field at that time when you're feeling that. Um, and sometimes it's a little bit more than that. Sometimes there's a recession in your, in your industry. Sometimes there's huge layoffs. Sometimes like a company like Netflix or Warner Brothers will start like nixing an animation division. So a bunch of animators are now unemployed. And uh, so there's that aspect to like how, you go about with your work but when you apply to like a lot of these places there's like the more general way of applying where like oh they're open for recruitment apply because you want to be a background painter sword artist animator etc and then the other way is you're you're going more actively as if you're running your own business because you're like okay i'm an animator and i'll speak for myself right now i'm an animator and i have a service that i can sell to you i can sell you my labor mm. it's animation so i look i'm actually contacting you to see if you need work so mm. it's it's kind of like the salesman, but what you're selling is your your labor, not a product, because they're the ones with the product. You're the working hand for it. So, um, mm. if you do kind of like this, uh, if that's another way of going about it, you're you're the one who's always vigilant to like proactively reach out to clients and create client connections. And then the more of that kind of work you do, the more of that will come your way. So that's a that's just a like a, a small aspect of it. I do have like a, ge a very general idea about like going about work is I think your work should always be so outstandingly good that it becomes bad business for companies not to hire you. So if you can focus on the quality, like always focus on the quality, you get a shitty job, just make sure you're doing the best job you can on it based off of what they're asking you to do. And uh, when you're not working the space between jobs, like that's where the anxiety and pressure and uncertainty builds up, right? What do you do between jobs? If you're focusing that time on, developing your craft so that the next job you get you're just gonna slam it because you've just been sharpening your blade like um I, I feel like that's definitely like an attribute to being successful in for example the animation industry or in entertainment so when you go back to these dancers you're like hey i got a gig in september i don't know when the next one's coming if between that they're doing nothing i can imagine that person's gonna have a lot of stress thinking about the next job they're gonna get but if they're if they're in the studio every day breaking and popping and checking their form in the mirror and stuff like that like they're developing the craft they're not getting they're not getting like rusty you know yeah so i, I think yeah, that, that goes a lot to like just kind of like mentally appease like the person through the journey and because this is the thing too where it seems again it's back almost to what you were talking about before with you with your obsession about it right it's not just you're not you're not speaking about being obsessed with what's directly in front of you it's almost like your obsession in the craft because mm -hmm. to your point of like, all right, well, the job's done, mm -hmm. but I can still be working. I can still be sharpening my blade, like you were saying. Yeah. 
it's people who are obsessed with mastery as opposed to just getting a task done and getting a payday. Like you could want all mm. that stuff, but if you're if you're obsessed with like mastery of an art form, um, that sets you on a completely different path than the people around you. That's your job security. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow, that's a smack. That's awesome. <laughs> your job security is the mastery of your art form. <laughs> yeah. That that's actually it that's such a simplistic but profound statement <laughs> it's like i think that's the thing though is people get focused on the on the task there's it's like oh i need to get the job i need to get the job it's like but you're focusing on the wrong like like you said if you're if you're if you're it then you'll get it if you're the if you're what they need you'll get it. it's almost like the stay ready so you don't have to get ready mentality yeah yeah that's good uh, about it. car's always on yeah you know? <laughs> yeah but I love how it's worded. Uh, and I think those are the things that is exciting to me is, is in anime, when I do reactions and people, when I start relating it to real life or other philosophies, people are like, oh man, I didn't even think of it that way. But it's like, it's the same thing. It's just worded in a way that mm -hmm. may be digestible for someone else. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the beauty of what this is right now is <laughs> you, you said something that is so like, but it's a derivative of something I've already heard before, but it's placed in a way that makes you say, wow, that, that that's actually a great way, a better way of explaining this to someone that may not speak in a particular manner. So mm -hmm. I think in, in terms of what you're currently working on, because you just finished a, um, a project, correct? Like your own personal, yeah. was it a comic? Yeah, so just before Legend, I had finished um, a graphic novel that's three parts long. And um, by now, I only have a few copies of the, the book. So it was always the plan to turn into like a master hardbound anthology. And uh, hmm. I did that. Like I, I, I contacted my printers over the last year and I had a I had became a father last year. So I was spending congratulations, maybe by the way. Ah, thank you, sir. Um, yeah, no, that that's that's my big project, my girl. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, yeah. When, because like uh, time is so tight, I was working for this, doing this trailer for my book as a, like a, a Kickstarter co a commercial for ten months for like forty minutes a night, and it was just wow. adding up. It's such a short commercial, but it took so long to do because I will, I mean, I'll I'll get any minutes I can get, man. Like I, just because I don't get all the time I want to focus on it, like it doesn't mean I don't want it still. So if you give me only twenty minutes, thirty minutes, like oh, I'm gonna do whatever I can with those time. And um, it's, I, I did that. I, I spent all of last year doing that. And then this year, mm -hmm. a month ago, I launched it. And it it, it was soul food for me, man. Like getting the book to be wow. in this form is, it's not at the beginning of something. It's not like, oh, wow, what's he going to do next? It's the end of something. This is me saying goodbye mm. to the project forever. Like, I, well, forever as long as I could say. But um, for, foreseeably, like it was me finally putting a, a close to this and getting to make something theatrical to make it look like it was actually a movie. Like I got to do everything. I got, I had to do something animated for it. I got to get my friends on it, my, the voice acting, the music. I got my parents to write a song for it. I asked him, my dad, like, dad, could you, this is old Mongolian song. Hold, like, can you, yeah. <laughs> time out. Ta hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. So your parents make music? No, they don't. So I, my what? buddy Cooper, who did the music, uh, some of the music on legend, he said, uh, yeah. I asked him like, okay, this is old Mongolian song. I like, could you do a, a, a can you do a tune cover of it? Cause I'm going to ask my dad to sing a Bengali song in that tune. It's not like anyone's going to know what oh, it wow. means. And then I asked my dad, I'm like, dad, can you sing? He's like, eh, eh. okay, I'll try. And then he calls me a week later. He's like, I don't think it's working out. I'm like, wait, dad, what's wrong? He's like, I'm not finding a song. I'm like, dad, don't overthink it. Just find a song you like, sing it in right. the tune. He's like, got you. Calls me a week later. Eh, yep. I don't think it's working out. And then I'm like, dad, you're overthinking it. I tell him the same thing. He's yeah. like, okay. He calls me a week later. He's like, no, sir, uh, you, your mother and I are having a hard time finding a song. So instead we wrote a song. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I don't know if it's that good though. And he started singing on the phone. I'm like, dad, stop. Do exactly this, this Saturday. I'm filming with my mic. <laughs> and he's like, uh, maybe your mother should sing it. And then I couldn't believe it, man. I came, I recorded both of them. And I sent it to Cooper and we made the fucking wickedest song, man. It's the second that song so that's in that cool. trailer. And the best part is it rhymes with the Mongolian one. Like I couldn't believe oh, it. Wow. Look, the song's from Tuva, but I, I think the language is the same. But yeah, like it was it was nice, man. And uh 
Yeah, so oh, it was cool. this was the project for me. My family is even on it. So um yeah, once this is all done, there's two days left in my campaign. Once it's all done and I get everything in my hands and I can send it out, uh this would be the greatest uh project that I've ever worked on so far. Uh, Congratulations, man. That <laughs> sounds incredible. Like that sounds incredible. Thanks. And I think that like the fact that you had like almost every aspect of your of your life invested like in this project like yeah obviously the art side of things for one the animation side of things like you were talking about you have your music stuff that you did you had your family in it like that's such a culmination project yeah it's crazy and like even uh uh this isn't a spoiler for the book but the main protagonist in the book is uh his character is based off my mom because i tried uh -huh. to create and like people are like oh is this character you and i said no it's this is i've like fictionalized the type of person I want to become. He has all the attributes I want. They were all in mm -hmm. her. And like, there's some other ones that as I got older, they were added into him. So he's kind of like a base point like this. when we have talked about how anime affects us, like we we're the ones thinking we're Goku when we're at the gym, you know, we're the, things, right. we're the ones who run, yell out KO Ken, we're on the field. So it's not <laughs> like these, these fictions don't like bleed into our real, real life, even though we know it's like, right. ironically in his joke, but I created a fiction where this is, kind of like a pillar. Like if, if I want to, the further I go in my life, the further I get away from this character that I mm. kind of crafted with all the attributes of like a really admirable person, the further I get from that, the more I know I'm off track. So um, mm. that was, so like even the book itself, like has like a, a, a deep meaning. Uh, it, it doesn't have a deep meaning. It's a very simple book, but the character itself is very meaningful to me. That sounds awesome, man. That's so sick. I, <laughs> I you know, it's, it's like, what would you say for people that are, wanting to create something right like uh whatever it is whatever art that they want to create but maybe feel like it's not they're not good enough to make it like mm -hmm. what would you what would you how would you help maybe inspire them to to maybe push past that fear yeah i mean um if they're feeling that it means they probably aren't good enough to make it and they should like mm. really recognize that they're not good enough, but then they have to figure mm. out what they have to do to become good enough. And mm. to just not do it, that's not the answer. To just do it with all your force, that also might not be the answer because maybe two years down the line, maybe five months down the line, you feel like, man, this is such a colossal waste of time. And then you start resenting yourself and your own project. So mm. I think when you, whenever you have this doubt, I can't do it. If you can at least rely on your future self and say, well, future Nas can figure it out, future Adonis can figure it out. If you at least believe in yourself that much, you may not believe in the skill or whatever you're trying to do. Um, but if you can at least have the confidence in yourself that he will figure it out if I give him this amount of time, uh, that's one really organized way to start getting what you want. It may not give you the answer right away, but like it's a good way. So like time is always a good thing. Like I was trying to say, okay, I can't figure it out, but two and a half months, two and a half months, I'll have my designs done. I'll know exactly what I want to do. I'll do all my reconnaissance. I might not be good at drawing hands, but I will be by then. And um, I'll do whatever I, ever I have to do to get that. Because I can take each goal and break it into a smaller goal. So to get the hands mm. to be drawn better, I have to draw 100 hands a week. To be able to make the time for that, I have to be able to do it one hour a night. Like So like every time mm. I have a goal, I can always like, like sublimate it. So I hope that's the right, right. But I can, I can just break it down into other things to make it doable. And then you get so far from the main goal, so far down the tree, you're like, oh, all I have to do is draw a hand... For three hours tonight okay but why but then you look at the whole list you're like oh well, if i did it this many times and this many weeks and this it's going to create this and that creates that and that's part of the plan and like when it's all put together like now i i've i've like leveled up like you know it's like it's like getting exp in a game like how, right. how many how, how much how much am i putting into my stat points like it'll take 100 exp which is 100 hours to gain plus one level on my anatomy and then another 100 exp just to get good at painting so uh, right. Turning it kind of like into like a video game is always a fun thing. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, again, like your, your, your philosophy on this stuff is really cool, man. Like your ability to focus, then hyper focus of like, okay, I understand my goal. It, so this is something I actually learned from Steve Jobs was he was, he was talking about, we don't just look at all the technology we have and say, Hey, what can I make with this? I say, okay, what do I want to make? And then I reverse engineer to what, what, what do I need to do to make this thing? 
Oh, that's a good way to um, think about it. Yeah. And it was really interesting when I first heard that, but rarely do I see people that kind of apply that philosophy though. Um, and it, cause it's hard to, it's hard to think that way. It's hard to say, okay, I want to get to here, but what are the other, what are the little steps? Because you just want to, you want to eat the elephant, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, I need to eat this elephant. It's like, yeah, but you can't eat the elephant, but you can piece this thing and eat, eat it by, you know, bit by bit. And eventually this elephant will be gone. So mm-hmm. what uh, was there? Obviously Dragon Ball is a huge influence to you. But was there anything that you've watched in anime that helped foster this obsessive uh, personality that you have? Like this helped almost like build more confidence into how you operate? If it was specifically just anime, like something I consumed, I'm like, well, you know, that. Uh, There are Mm. two. So one is Bow the Mm. Visitor, which is this old. It's from 87. It was done by the guy who did Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, apparently. And it's this like 58 minute OVA that's just so violent, so well drawn, Mm. so cool. And it was just the the camera angles, this guy saving the girl and then like the laser cannon and just the Mm. lines, like what they say, like that was like the framework of like, if I make things, this is what it's going to be. It's got to be like Mm. that intense. I have to care about the character this much, like how he's going to save this kid. I I have to make characters like that, that people want to see, like, what are they going to do next? I don't want just some cookie cutter stuff. Even as a kid, I was thinking that. Mm. And then the other one is, um, so there's Bao, and the other one was um, Street Fighter Two, the animated movie. Uh, the one oh, wow. Uh, released by Manga Entertainment. That one, um, Ryu waiting so long to see Ken again, reminded me of a friend. Okay. It was my friend from elementary school. Like He had moved away. There was no way to ever contact him again. And I also always mm. think, like, what is he doing, man? Like, is what is he, like, what is, like, what is he doing? Is he becoming, like, an athlete? Is he getting into writing? And like, I always think like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get to link up with him again. I did link up with him over Facebook eventually. Uh, but um, that was like, you know, when I finally got a color computer and stuff, but, um, right. but that scene with Ryu on a mountain and just the, the bandana. And like, he remembers how he got the bandana because Ken kicked him in the head and he tied him up and like, like this, like this bond between two friends that it just will never die no matter how far they are in the world. That uh, mm-hmm. something about that was just so cool. And then when he finally sees Ken, Ken is possessed by Bison eventually. So he has to fight his best friend. And like, it matters like the, this dramatic battle, like you care so much about what's happening with these characters and also right. they're street fighters. They're so cool. And then eventually they team up for the best like team special ending. So like um, something about that, like it, that, that always resonated with me. And like the, the friend who had given me the movie and like how, how hard he had gone to get the dub for me. Like he was older than me. He was my sister's friend. And, um, mm-hmm. And he was hooking him up with all this cool anime and like we didn't come from like a like a really rich area so he was always um always doing so much like just try to like be kind of like a big brother even though i had a big brother <laughs> like you know uh but yeah like, like just getting like his hands on just something like that was really complicated and uh him just sharing with me like those are already so like meaningful so um i attribute like everything i felt about like being able to get that VHS in my hand, getting to watch it, getting to draw, getting to think about it when I was training, when I was drawing, when I was playing sports, all of that is attributed just to the movie Street Fighter 2. You know, like anytime I'll see wow. it, I remember all that stuff. <laughs> so it, it definitely, it, it, it really jump started a lot for me. That's incredible. That's so crazy. <laughs> it, is there is there any person that you, when you heard that they watched anime that you looked into that you were like, oh my God, this person watches anime like was that because uh, we came from the same era so at that yeah. time it was not a cool thing to talk about anime it wasn't a cool thing to be like oh yeah so when was it where you first maybe saw someone that you didn't even knew watched anime and you were like hold on what like did that ever yeah. happen to you <laughs> i mean in terms of like uh, like on like the same like level as me i had a friend in university when she told me she watches naruto i'm like wait, what? You watch Naruto? <laughs> like, aren't you like one of these like clubbing girls and shit like that? Like a, a cool girl right. watch Naruto. <laughs> like, right. And then the only other time like that, that kind of like, I'm like, wait, what anime is, uh, you know, the actor, Michael Jordan. In, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Creed. Yeah. He's still yes. Michael Jordan, by the way, without the B. Yeah. I had he is. a huge You're argument correct. with my friend about this. I told him, do you watch Creed three? He's like, which one? I'm like the one with Michael Jordan. He's like the basketball player. I'm like, no, not the basketball player. He's like, I saw the first two. Like, if you saw the first two, why would you think it was the basketball player in the third one? <laughs> it's so stupid. But anyway, 
Anyway, that's that's such funny. a long talk. So that's so meaningless, funny. but that's that hilarious. Movie, he he said he really liked Bleach. I was like, wait, mm. like celebrities like anime? <laughs> and then uh yeah, then I started to realize like um it's it's in people's lives, man. <laughs> like it's in yeah. everyone's life so, in some sort of way. Yeah, he's actually one of the people that I really want to get on the podcast. Like I, that's like a goal of mine of like getting him on the pod because yeah. when he was talking about Creed three was the, um, the inspirations he took from like Hajime no Ippo and Dragon Ball Z. And, and, and it was just like, hold on. Like he's really in it. Like that's yeah. Hajime no Ippo is not something that you just accidentally, like yeah. you got to kind of know your way yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Oh wow. I was like, hold on. So yeah, he him uh, style bender the fighter style bender, yeah. um, he's a big anime head. Real, like right? so, yeah, b- big Naruto, big Naruto yeah. fan. Avatar, um, he's got like the, the Avatar the water spirits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's just really it's it's a, a really cool time I think um, for people that are into anime that grew up in an era where it wasn't cool, where mm-hmm. it's like dang, like we can finally be like oh yeah you guys are the cool guys now it's like oh yeah like we've we've been doing this for a while guys (laughs) so um before we go bro um what would you what what would be your your top five anime list uh okay yeah what would be your top five because i know it's tough and i'm putting you on the spot let me think about this for a second before i embarrass myself um okay so like you, Dragon Ball exists outside of this mm. list because it is the progenitor to everything. Yeah. And to me, Street Fighter 2, the animated movie, is too. So I'm not going to put those in okay. there. Um, so in terms of like series and movies and stuff like that, um, and not in the order of how much I like them because they're all number ones for me, but they're number ones for a different reason. But these are the top Got ones. Got you. So Cowboy okay. Bebop, definitely. Awesome. Um, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, okay. including like the movies, like all of that stuff. Uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, a hundred percent, and uh, Hunter x Hunter, the original. Okay. And uh, let me think, because I'm running out of numbers here. I have one left. I will put it on Naruto. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, That's Full a great list. Brotherhood is it's like it's in like they're all number ones remember i can only yeah, yeah, tell you yeah. five though so yeah, yeah. it was brotherhood somewhere there and it'll sneak its way in but like if i'm going to tell you five those are the five so you so because i haven't seen the original hunter hunter but you're saying that you you prefer the original over the the newer variant of it i've only seen a bit of the new one and i'm a bit old to watch it now like i can't enjoy it the same way i did with that but that one Got man you. when Kurapika had to like take down the ryudan and like with the red eyes and like he goes nuts mm. when he kills Ubo, like all that stuff like i remember like it was winter i was on vacation there was nothing to do and like i had a, co- I had a computer finally and like i could watch stuff on it and i was watching that at night and it was freezing cold outside so i didn't have like the obligation to be doing anything else i was allowed to be just sitting down and relaxing i i think there's this maybe there's something wrong with me where like i don't like relaxing it's not that i don't like relaxing i'm not gonna say i don't like relaxing uh, but I feel like if if I have time to relax, there's something I'm supposed to be doing, whether it's something fun or something mm. not fun. But but right. still, but that time though, like it's like when you get sick and you're just just not sick enough to be, enjoy stuff, but sick enough to not have yes. to do anything big. It's Correct. like that. But that was winter, and that's when I enjoyed Hunter x Hunter the original, and I got to watch all that Ryu dance stuff in season two. I'm like, man, that was good. <laughs> I need to I need to check it out because I've only seen the newer variant of it. I hadn't seen the original, so I might check it out to see what that yeah. difference is. Um, yeah, I wonder but, if it holds. Yeah, I know. Same. I, that's always. But I, and on your list, the neon uh, even what's it called? Evangelion. Yeah. Evangelion. People have been telling me to watch it because I haven't seen it before. So uh, right, people have been like, like hey, you should check stuff. it out. I'm like, all right. So it's definitely on the list of things that I need to watch. But Nasir, yeah. man, I appreciate you for being here, brother. Thank you so much for taking the yeah, time. Man. I know you're a busy man. Uh, and I will be reaching out to you for any uh, father advice <laughs> in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I appreciate I appreciate uh, your ear and uh, and your friendship, man. You're a really cool guy. And, uh, very excited to see what else you produce out here. Thanks, man. And I'll give you some... Uh pre unsolicited fatherly advice there's only one really worthwhile thing i'll say like you know yeah. people think about like oh how am i going to take care of this child like where's the money going to come from how am i supposed to... just think about one thing whatever you can do 
to make your wife less mad at you all the time, mm. that is the right answer. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is it. Like, yeah, <laughs> you'll, you, if you don't already know, like, then you'll know. Even, even <laughs> if, even if you know it's not the right thing, it's just like, all right. By yeah. proxy, it makes yeah. it the right thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. Hey, man, I appreciate you, bro.